the Wangler's Viper. Check out how I'm going to draw this one. Okay, now whether you want to do a follow on or not, watching this video you're going to learn how to put scales together. Especially those tricky little ones that go around corners. You may use this if you want to paint a dragon, a lizard, a fish or anything that has scales. It's a handy hint in this video showing you how to do that. Plus there's going to be some problem solving along the way. So this is the drawing we're doing today. And I'm starting off with the spine and the head. So I often start off with a snake, especially if it's a bit complicated with the scales. So I mark the vertebrae in first, the, the backbone, the spine. And from that, both sides comes well, the side of the snake. However, on some bits, like the neck here, you don't see the other side. Let's refine that, where that backbone's going to go. So this gets complicated because, because sometimes you see one side and you don't see the other and then it flips around the other way and then you see the other side and the bends are very tricky. So I'm going to just work on the head now, I'm just popping the eye in there. So I'm inserting the face of the finished drawing here so you guys can copy that if you like, you can see what my hand's doing. If you are confused, just pause the video, stop it, watch what I do, then go back over it. I'm really just marking in some of the scales around the eye. A little bit of eye detail there. I've got a few videos on how to draw snake eyes. Cute little scales around there. So with this viper, and well with a lot of snakes really, you're seeing larger scales around the mouth area and in some snakes they go up to larger scales on top of the head but with a lot of the vipers they have smaller scales in the head have a nasal scale there scale with a hole in it the front part of the nose is a little bit pointy like this so i'm marking out the scales which probably the out of the ordinary ones the ones that are a little bit unusual. Now right here there is where there's a pit. It's a heat seeking pit like a python or a pit viper. And we're going to continue these scales around our happy little snake. Continuing the scales along the mouth section None of these have to be exactly like what I have here, and they don't have to be exactly perfect. Sort of roughly there, and your drawing should look okay. Popping in the chin here, and of course in the lower lip, very similar to the top one, you got larger scales, and they often don't quite meet up. Because we're looking really side on here, we're sort of seeing a little bit of the scales under the scales of the lips, which often you don't see on a snake. But he's got his head just tilted to the side, so he's having a good look at us. Maybe he doesn't feel threatened. Because a lot of snakes, when they don't feel threatened, they just kind of get curious. Uh, leaving a bit there, we're going to have some pretty colours coming through here is I've got two lines running down the back of the snake. And on those two lines, I'm going to start marking out where the scales are going to be. Because we're going to make a little brick wall. It's going to be like the body of the snake's made up of bricks. Starting here, the nape of the neck, just marking in the length of each scale. And sometimes when it goes around the corners, this, this gets a little bit narrower. So let's put in the next row. So I'm speeding this up because this would take hours to do this. And in goes the next row. So you're really just putting in another dash, which is in the middle of the one above it. It's like a brick wall. 
let's drop in the other one and you sort of see how it goes around the corner here but when it gets up about here it starts to get really narrow and starts to disappear when it comes out here it gets bigger again and that's following the shape of the snake so this is kind of like an advanced scale drawing course if you like advanced scales you'll notice that in this first bend the scales they just get bigger and this is what happens in real life a snake's scales when they have a bend they often stretch out so you see the skin between the scales and on the inside of the coil the inside of a bend they overlap so when you do the brick wall it just magically happens like that now you can see I've sort of done it in here sometimes use the eraser to correct a few mishaps but right here in this corner see how it sort of like curves out from nothing so you got a line coming across here you can see in the actual speed I'm doing it and here it just sort of takes a bit of a corner and just on the stick there on the branch it's skins like a little bit loose and it's bending a little bit so it's got a wrinkle so like I said advanced scale drawing here we're going to draw scales over a wrinkle now the ones next to the belly scale I have to really mark those in really well I'm also making like a honeycomb shape here I'm changing the shape of those bricks I'm concentrating on this area because we're going to be putting those belly scales in and those belly scales have to correspond with the side scales like that now here you can sort of see how it takes the corner there and then it disappears into that one try and get that one right and like I said I've sped this up quite a bit so you probably want to pause and catch up to bits the good thing about this is you can see the finished drawing and you can look at what I'm doing and if you're not quite sure how that happened you just go back over the video and have another look okay now I'm doing the head scales I'm doing them pretty rough I just knocked down a pattern like that because the head scales are kind of distorted now see this little trick I'm doing here it's like a zigzag line that I do through it and by doing that it's a very quick way of almost drawing that scale in complete if you watch some of the other videos I've done on how to draw snakes you'll see in more recent times I've been using this technique a fair bit You'll see it in my videos on when I'm probably doing a more advanced just drawing thing and sharing hints like in my five facts about copperhead and five art tips and I did the same with a king brown snake. You'll sort of see me do that sort of funny zigzaggy weaving through the bricks which creates scales. If you can't quite get a hang of that what you can do is just replace every brick with a scale. But after a couple of years I noticed that when I did that I was kind of just doing this anyway. I think I also do this because it makes the scales a little bit more diamond like and that's sort of the shape of the scale of my favorite snake which is the tiger snake. But this viper has not only has it have scales like this it also has has keeled scales and we'll get onto that in a little bit when we start doing the shading so now I'm just moving in with the ink so you just got hit up with the most of the how to draw because the hardest bits getting the shape in the first place after that it's kind of outlining and when you do the outlining you tend to probably start doing a bit of your own style I'm using paintbrush and traditional nibs. You could use a marker pen, different thicknesses if you like. 
whatever you're more comfortable with. I'm actually just more comfortable with nibs and brushes because I'm very old. Also, while I'm putting in these black lines, I'm refining it a little bit. And if you're not quite happy with the pencil that you've done, you could probably use this as a guide. See what I'm doing here? Just follow along in pencil. Maybe rub out the bits you're not happy with and see how I handle it here with ink. So I do sneak in the occasional scale. One of the things about lines, you've noticed that I've put a heavy line underneath and a light line on top. That's one of the things I've often done with snakes, just to, well, with any object really, just to give it a bit of weight. Slap some color on. I've got a little bit of white gouache mixed in with some watercolor. I'm doing that to make the scales on the lighter part look lighter so they don't look so inked in like a cartoon. So striving for a little bit of realism here. Really trying to get the brightest green possible. I've mixed a little bit of aqua with lemon yellow to get this green. So not if you get your lemon yellow and a bit of turquoise or something like that, and that can get a really bright green. Just little bits of warm yellow thrown in little bits around places. So it's not all cool, it's sort of warm as well. And we've got these rusty orange spots and stripes. And some of these vipers are actually different colours, different markings, but the one I liked looked a bit like this. Now the foliage in the background, I'm just throwing that in there. I'm making it a dull green. I want it to not stand out as much, or rather I want the snake to sort of really stand out because of how bright and colorful it is. Now I'm trying to add the keeled bit. So by a keeled scale, I'm thinking of a keel of a ship. It's sort of like got an upraised bit in the center. So I'm using a black pencil. So you see the scales under the chin there at the jawline. I've sort of drawn them the bottom half dark to try and make it look like it's upraised a bit in the center. I'm using some colored pencil in this. Uh, it's a black pencil. It wasn't quite as black. And what I've got is a disconnect between the black line underneath the Viper and the pencil. It just doesn't gel, doesn't blend. So I'm going back over this with a little bit of ink and watch carefully how I combine that and try and smooth it out and do a blending with ink. So I'm marking in with a nib pen, a fine pen, putting in some fine details there. This is sort of helping blend from that heavy line through. While I'm here, I might just add a bit more foliage, knocking a little bit with some watercolor. Shape of the head's really wide and really flat. It's kind of like a shovel. So this going wide there and then going narrow there, it's called foreshortening when something looks narrower than it actually is because it's on an angle, like your hand. So I'm going to put some shading around the jawbone here, around the side of the head to try and make it look, give it a bit more shape. And I'm going to make some white highlights around the pit there between the eye and the nose hole, because it's a pit viper after all. And you can see I've put some white highlights on top of the head to try and flatten the top of the head a bit. I'm using gouache. I'm going to paint each of the scales, which is running along the spine those first couple of lines that we did. And if anybody's still copying this, well done, that's amazing. At some stage, you probably just have to wing it and have a go. But if you didn't copy, hopefully you've picked up some handy hints and you've like learnt a bit along the way. I hope this isn't too daunting. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think. Is this way too much? Should I tone it back a bit and make more simple how to draws? I'm trying to make it at all levels, and I guess this one would be called an advanced level. And that was my Wangler's Viper video. If you enjoyed this video, maybe hit the subscribe button and you know hit the bell icon so you don't miss a video. But also, if you drew along, I hope you picked up some hints. I'm mostly doing this channel for people who love wildlife but are also wanting to draw. However, if you just like the image, 
and want a copy of it, I've put a link in the description below to the Redbubble site, which has a whole heap of products. You can even have face masks if you want. See you in the next video.